<laughs> our fat innkeeper worm that you may or may not have seen on the news. The fat innkeeper worm is what you may have heard referred to as the penis fish washing up on some shores there in Northern California. Very quickly, neither a phallus nor a fish. It is, in fact, a worm. Emily, can you tell us a little bit about the fat innkeeper worm, one of the world's amazing ecky urines, one of those spoon worms <laughs> yeah, there? Yeah, so this is a spoon worm, like you said, Patrick, that burrows in the mud. And so you can see right now, I'm trying to make it look as photogenic as possible possible but yes. uh, we have one of those uh, worms here at the aquarium inside of some burrows that uh, we've created for it but out in the wild it would be creating these burrows for itself so you know you can have a couple of these spoon worms out there you can have thousands of these spoon mm -hmm. worms out there burrowing down into the mud casting these big mucus nets to catch their food in and then out of the rear end of these yep. spoon worms they're shooting a nice jet of water and all the food that they do not want uh, and it creates a home for themselves it creates a home for many of the other animals out there in these kind of muddy areas these slough areas mm -hmm. um, including different kinds kinds of shrimps and crabs. Uh, so oftentimes you'll hear them called, instead of penis fish, mm -hmm. uh, fat innkeeper worm. Yeah, and that is uh, the preferred term. If you look uh, all across worm Twitter, science Twitter, <laughs> all of those folks out there uh, commenting on uh, various articles. Yeah, so they, you know, um, there are a lot of animals out there that have fish attached to their, to their common name, starfish, jellyfish. And uh, obviously it's not intended to say that those are fish, like true other fish. You know, uh, once you get into the nitty gritty, it's really even hard to define what a fish is to other fishes because humans are more like some fish than some fish are to other things that we call fish, like a hagfish or a lamprey. Those are very different types of fish than, say, your great white shark out there, your, uh, your goldfish that you may know about at home. So um, don't get too offended by the term penis fish for them. It's just one of those things where it's just like starfish, jellyfish, penis fish, one of those common names. Penis worms is another thing. Uh, but fat innkeeper worm is much, it, it's a much better term, not only because, you know, these animals are incredibly important uh, as ecosystem, uh, just they're an important part of the ecosystem, but they also create habitat for other animals. Like you were saying, Emily, there are animals that live in the inn with the innkeeper worm in a type of um, in a uh, type of relationship that's known as commensalism. Commensalism means that you have, uh, you're doing something out there and then other animals are uh, using that particular uh, part of you. Maybe it's your habitat, the burrow that you make in the case of the innkeeper worm. Maybe it's living on top of the back of another animal and uh, really no net negative to the innkeeper worm. A lot of net positives to the gobies and the scale worms and other animals that are living in their burrow. So commensalism, that's your word of the day uh, there for these particular animals. Uh, and that is uh, that fat innkeeper worm. And Emily, you've done a really good job of uh, changing the camera over now to see a little bit more of what's going on. We've got other critters here in the sand, in the muck, in that slough environment uh, that we have all up and down the coast of North America, hence why there are so many of those fat innkeeper worms washing up. I mean, they're incredibly abundant. Lots of other animals there living in the muck below uh, below the surface. Tell us about what we've got there. Yeah, so we were talking about some of these animals that will live in these inns that the fat innkeeper worm is creating. Uh, here at the aquarium, we have some ghost shrimp that live in our fat innkeeper worms. A little hotel uh, that it has created for itself here. So uh, over towards the far right side of the screen, that's what you're going to see right now. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in just a little bit on those those buddies over there so you can get a good look at them. I always think, and maybe it's just because I'm from Arizona, that they look a little bit more like scorpions and they do shrimp, but I think it really has something to do with that, that kind of body shape of theirs uh, with that kind of really, really long uh, end of their body that they've kind of tucked underneath. But uh, by beating those swimmerettes that it has there on its tail, it's actually able to gather its food. Right. And so that's another animal there that's living below the muck. There are so many animals that live in the mud all up and down the coast here. Uh, there are so many different types of clam, uh, different types of mussels. I mean, so many mollusks. You've got worms, you've got shrimp, you've got crustaceans and the like. Oh, Emily, our uh, fat innkeeper worm there is on the move uh, there. 
yeah. Yeah, if we want to uh, look back over there at the star of the show, we've got a lot of folks that are tuning in here. Um, oh, are these particular tunnels molded or did the worm make them? Uh, these are the ones that we've made here at the aquarium. We are currently in our nature center uh, over by the Elkhorn Slough uh, area with the aviary right behind our back. The Bat Ray Touch Pool is also behind us there. So this might be something that you may have skipped when you visited uh, the aquarium previously, but this uh, fat innkeeper worm uh, area is made by us, but out in the wild, again, there are thousands of these all throughout the sand. And I, as a scuba diver out here in the Monterey Bay, I've been swimming around and every once in a while you see one or two of these out of the muck, out on the sand. Maybe they got picked up by an otter. Maybe they um, are not doing too hot, escaped their particular mud area. Uh, but when you have big waves, big swell, a lot of disturbance there of that muck and then currents that push these animals there on shore, that's how you get that big stranding that was all over the news. Now, again, Emily, these are common. It's not any danger to, uh, to folks out there. It's not an invasion. These yeah. are out there all the time, and it just so happens that we happen to see them washed up there on the beach. Exactly. Just because uh, you don't see them out there doesn't mean that they aren't there. They're just buried a couple of feet under the mud. Like you said, Patrick, when those big storms, those big waves roll in, kind of disturb and churn up all that mud, you can get strandings like the ones that we saw here in California. Um, mm -hmm. With the fat innkeeper worm that we are looking at right now, we're actually watching it do something really cool, and that's the motion that it is mm -hmm. using right now. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, Patrick? Yeah. So again, uh, these animals are there in the muck. They're creating water currents that help them capture food like you were mentioning Emily they have a mucus net that uh, many worms will do this um, actually if you're out in the Monterey Bay if you're diving you'll see what are known as lug worms often with big old mucus nets that just kind of whip around outside of their burrow so these spoon worms similarly they have a mucus net that helps them uh, gather up little bits of food and they're creating a water current that's slowly drawing in water there into the tube and this peristaltic motion that we have there on that worm is creating a water current. And actually, its neighbor next door also seems <laughs> to be uh, doing a lot of extra pumping. So uh, these animals also have at their rear end uh, a row, a little ring around their, around their tail, around their anus, a ring of golden bristles uh, that may help them anchor themselves in the mud when they are uh, doing that. So um, you also have there the golden um, the golden bristles there, the butt spines, <laughs> as we may have referred to them. Uh, so those are also there on the back. So um, spoonworms, echiurans, there, there's a lot of debate back and forth over, uh, you know, where they fall in the worm phylogeny. So um, they don't have any segments to their bodies. So they, for a long time, were thought to be completely separate from uh, the segmented polychaetes. There's uh, research that suggests that they've actually secondarily lost that segmentation so they are actually a polychaete but these are just spoonworms just in general emily absolutely bizarre organisms that have had a hard time trying to figure out you know where where they fall on the phylogeny uh they're in a different yeah they're just a different type of worm that you just don't really expect lots of amazing things with them exactly yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and that peristalsis that that kind of movement that we see it doing right now uh, might be familiar to I hope many of you here watching this stream right now, if you have ever eaten or drank anything before in your life, uh, peristalsis. I would hope most people yeah, have I done hope so. so. Yeah, if, uh, if you haven't done that in a while, we encourage we you to try it, it out. Yeah. yeah, drinking and eating, a uh, fantastic way to stay alive. It is. Yeah. Uh, that's the number one recommended thing to stay alive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But recommend. peristalsis is something that we do ourselves um, with our esophagus. So your esophagus has these circular muscles around it. And as they contract, that helps to push your food and your drink down and into your gut. So Mm -hmm. uh, that peristalsis, it's something that you and this spoonworm that we are looking at right now, you have in common with it. Yeah, and there are, uh, so it, it's a very bizarre animal, we're not going to lie. And so when it washes up on the beach, obviously, a lot, uh, lot of suggestive <laughs> names for them. Um, again, fat innkeeper worms are, is what we're talking about here this morning. We're in our nature center. If you are just joining us, my name is Patrick. I work at the aquarium here in social media. My name is Emily. I also work on our social media team. And so we were very excited to see <laughs> our fat innkeeper worm content from over the years actually be relevant to all of you folks out this there. Our 15 minutes of, of spoon worm fame here. Right. And again, very quickly, uh, you may have heard of them referred to on the news as penis fish. They are not fish. 
They're not penises either. Fat innkeeper worm. They are an ecchi urine, which means viper tail worm, viper tail for the bristles that they have off of their butt. So they've got golden butt bristles. These are viper tailed worms, spoon worms, same thing. Eki urines, Eurekis Kaupo right here is the fat innkeeper <laughs> worm there on screen. So just wanted to make sure you folks all know, not a fish, same thing with starfish, jellyfish, just a common name out there trying to describe something from, uh, something from the ocean and then something that it looks like in front of it, uh, but truly amazing animals that live here in the Monterey Bay, all up and down the coast of California, and every once in a while, one of the things you may see, beach coming, and now you know. But uh, Emily, we also see these animals being consumed by things. So people do eat these animals. Uh, yes, they are yeah. they are considered very, very tasty, um, but maybe not something that uh, here on the West Coast, us, uh, us European folks, not really something that we would have eaten too much of, but there's lots of cuisine out there that incorporates things like sea cucumbers and uh, spoonworms, things that we don't typically think about as being food. Uh, but besides people consuming these animals, uh, lots of animals out there in the wild yeah, consume them too, right? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, one that's probably pretty familiar to any of you who uh, have ever tuned into the Monterey Bay Aquarium before or came to visit before, of course, our favorite charismatic megafauna, the sea otter. Yeah. They absolutely love eating these uh, spoon worms, these little fat and keeper worms that we've got here. And so uh, oftentimes you'll see the sea otters diving down and grabbing these worms out of the mud there and chowing down on on them mm -hmm. out in the bay so yeah. very yeah. important part of the ecosystem here in california yeah you know you think uh especially right now that we've had a lot of rain here in the state we start seeing mushroom fruit uh fruiting bodies popping up out of the out of the mud you start seeing um you know earthworms and amphibians and other things walking through the woods uh there are so many animals that are living kind of out of sight out of mind that have really important uh, really important roles there. So not only are the fat innkeeper worms kind of helping bring in water, oxygen, all different things into their burrows. They're providing habitat again for other animals, hence the term innkeeper worm. Also food for lots of other animals there as well. Uh, so, you know, these weird looking animals, they have the way that they look is uh, something that they really need to do to perform a very specific job function. So uh, what you're looking at is a worm hard at work there in the muck doing its ecosystem service for all of us. And so we're so glad that the fat innkeeper worms have finally had their moment in the sun. Uh, we need more invertebrates going viral out there yeah. on the news. Yeah. And if it has to be the fat innkeeper worm because we'll of, take it. yeah, yeah I, we'll, we'll take it. So fat innkeeper worms, everyone, we're team Eki urine right now, at least this morning here. Uh, we're so happy to share the fat innkeeper worm with all of you folks. Yeah, and Patrick, I see a lot of questions coming in yes. from right now. We are live across all of our platforms on Periscope, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Uh, so thank you, everyone, for tuning in right now. Uh, we had a lot of questions out there from all these different platforms wondering how big these yep. fat innkeeper worms are. So just to kind of give you a, a comparison. So right now when it's kind of contracted like this, the one that we have in front of us is probably about five to six inches long. You can kind of see my hand right in front of it there. Nice. Um, but as it stretches out, it can get much, much longer than that, about 10 inches long. Yeah. And um, if you folks are ever out there, this is just a really important note for all of you folks out there. Uh, when you see something like that washing, like a mass stranding of anything, it can be really scientifically interesting. So the fact that there were all these headlines of like 10 inch long worms that are washing up on, on this beach, uh, scientists are really going to want to know where that is. So if you happen to be walking around on the beach, you see something that you don't know what it is, you can feel free to send us a message. We'll do our best. But you can also head over to iNaturalist, and that's a really great place to upload your sightings of different animals, especially something like a big stranding of worms that might be mm -hmm. uh, scientifically interesting uh, in the moment or a little bit later. And if you see jellies washed up on the beach, it's another good thing to head over to jellywatch.org, which is uh, maintained by folks here at the aquarium and folks over at the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute and other jellyfish biologists around the world. Um, so if you see a gelatinous looking thing, throw it up on Jelly Watch. Uh, if you see anything like this mass stranding of worms, put that up on our naturalist. Your observations are actually critical to help people follow what's going on. And you get out to the beach collectively more than scientists do, more than policymakers do, uh, just through all of you folks out there walking around. So when you take those photos, don't just leave them on uh, 
Don't leave them just in the tweets or on your Facebook post, on your Instagram story. You can also be a critical part of seeing that may be important. So put that up on iNaturalist. Put that up on jellywatch.org if you see a jelly. Send us a, a DM here if you need help identifying it. We'd love to help you out. Uh, that information is really crucial for people to know what's going on. So uh, that's just our little PSA for citizen <laughs> science. You folks are a part of this planet, a part of the ocean story. You live on the same earth as fat innkeeper worms. You may as well tell your friends and uh, folks out there that are studying these animals what you saw. So again, iNaturalist, that's the plug. Jellywatch.org, another plug right there <laughs> so that you folks can uh, help us know more about what's happening out there in the ocean. All of our eyes together, we can see a lot of really interesting things. Okay. All right, Patrick, I'm just yes, kind of going back and forth between what's happening in front of us right now yeah. and our questions that we are getting. Yeah. Uh, we've had a question there wondering which end is the head, which end is oh. the butt. You were talking about those golden uh -huh. butt spines. Yep. Where are they? Where are yeah. they on this? So, uh, this so if I know my way around fat innkeeper worms, we've got the tail end on the lower right and the head uh, that has a little bit of a proboscis uh, or like a little little lips there um, up front. I believe that's gonna be at the tippy top, but I could be wrong, Emily. What are we looking at? Yeah, so that yeah. is the, the front end towards the top okay. there, and then it's rear end towards, yeah. towards the if bottom. Yeah, if I could see those bristles, I could tell you exactly where, <laughs> where that rear end is. Again, the golden bristles there. Head over to iNaturalist to see some really amazing observations from scientists and uh, beachcombers, naturalists all up and down the coast there taking those photos. Uh, it's it's really gonna make your morning just to know really what those is. what those look like out there. Yeah. All right. right. Well, let's see. We've got so many folks that are tuning. Yeah, I saw in. A, uh, Doodle there over there on Twitch. Doodle, yes, your esophagus is making little worm motions mm -hmm. inside of you. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's really one of those uh, one of those things. You know, um, you know, inside your gut, you have all these little cilia, little hairs that are helping move molecules and food around. Uh, inside your belly, very similar to the little uh, cilia that you may have seen on the video we posted recently of the bat star larva. You may have seen those little cilia rumbly in the tumbly, uh, and same thing going on in our belly right now. And when you are swallowing food, same motion that you have there on this fat innkeeper worm when it is swallowing. Now, right now, it looks like the fat innkeeper worm's trying to invert itself. Now, people are yeah. wondering what we feed this particular animal. We have krill shakes and other uh, little uh, mixtures of food, little slurries that we can put in there, and then the worms and ghost shrimp that we have in there and the clams can naturally be uh, absorbing the food there from the water. Uh, out in the wild, these animals are going to be eating whatever can get caught in their mucus net. And uh, yeah, and they're again helping filter out a whole bunch of water, get that water down into the muck, helping out a lot of other organisms there as well. Let's see. Did that worm dig those tunnels? It's a good question, Julian. Uh, it did not dig these tunnels here at the aquarium. This is a exhibit here that we have at the Monterey Bay Aquarium uh, to tell you a little bit more about the animals that are living in the muck. But in the wild, Emily, these animals are absolutely making those U-shaped burrows there. And again, other animals living inside those burrows there. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, we were able to show off some of the shrimp here living in the tunnels with our fat innkeeper worm, uh, but you can get all different kinds of animals living in these tunnels that are made by them, uh, hence the name fat innkeeper. Oh, something else is moving on the left of the video. What was that? It's a good question. Uh, it depends where we were in the video, but we do have ghost shrimp in the exhibit as well, as well as another fat innkeeper worm there. So uh, Emily now has the ghost shrimp and fat innkeeper worm there together in full view More fantastic friends. yeah they live uh, symbiotically uh, they uh, that's a good question so uh, symbiosis implies that the two animals are directly benefiting from each other uh, but this is more commonly known as commensalism which means that one is doing their own thing and the other is benefiting from it so um, that is uh, a slightly different relationship but again you have gobies and worms crabs that are living in these burrows and uh, the fat innkeeper worm there just doing its own thing providing habitat though for other organisms there's lots of different examples of that for example you know a beaver is building its 
dam and creating this, uh, this little lake. And then obviously a lot of other animals benefit from that lake being around. Sea otters are eating their food and they're helping uh, the kelp forest stay resilient. So uh, just by doing your own thing, you can have a big effect on the environment around you, which is, I think, the Monday motivation that we uh, need, Emily, right? If you, you know, <laughs> I even if you're a fat innkeeper worm, just doing your thing. I make burrows. I suck in food via a mucus net. I look the way that I look. That animal is not only providing us with a lot of entertainment this morning, but it is also providing a habitat, a home for other organisms. And we're all benefiting from the fat innkeeper worm right now. So just doing your own thing out there is really the best thing you can do for everyone around you because everyone benefits from you doing your thing. You yeah. you do you, fat innkeeper worm. Exactly. That's how I... That's that's a good Monday motivation right there. Good Monday motivation. We're also getting incredibly excited in a very quiet uh, <laughs> aquarium here with nobody else really around. We're cleaning the tanks and we're over here just nerding out over the fat innkeeper worm. Could not think of a better start to this week here right. oh a whole lot of fun let's see no the shrimp is not going to eat it don't worry there elizabeth uh what in the name of all that is holy uh emily maybe it's a maybe it's a good time here in this live stream to yeah. do another round of who are we what are we doing what is that well my name is emily i work as part of the social media team here at the monterey bay aquarium this morning i am joined by and it's patrick over here on the other microphone and we are checking out a uh, kind of animal that has gone viral mm -hmm. in the news <laughs> lately. Uh, this is a fat innkeeper worm that we are looking at right now. However, if you have been paying attention to the news, uh, you might have heard it called a penis fish. This is neither a penis nor a fish, however. Yep. Uh, so just keep that in mind as we are looking at it. Uh, it's one of those names where kind of anything in the ocean uh people will sometimes call a fish just, like a just, starfish just jellyfish tack, yeah, they just, aren't fish just yeah. tag tack fish on onto the end and you've done your job as a common <laughs> name uh namer of things for the ocean but not a fish same thing with starfish or not fish uh it's yeah it's not a fish so not just fish. for the just for the worm, worm folks out there yeah. it's a worm but spoon worms, echi spoon urines, worms. very exciting worms. Yes, exactly. So uh, you mentioned before this is an echi urine or a spoon worm. It has this incredible ability to dig burrows out there in muddy sea bottoms, in estuaries. And right now we are watching ours here this morning as it is drying in water from in front of it. So its head would be kind of off towards that top right side and its rear end is down towards the bottom left side. Um, so these are worms that are casting out a mucus net, catching stuff that's in the water around it, drawing stuff in, creating its own little current in front of it, and then pushing everything out its rear end, kind of creating a little water jet that it shoots out yep. of its butt. Uh, so if penis fish wasn't enough yeah. there for you it also has a jet of water it can shoot out its butt as well as patrick one of your favorite things about it those spines oh uh, the golden butt spines the bristles off the back of this animal so these animals are uh, related to bristle worms uh the phylogeny of that goes back and forth between them being completely separate there's current evidence that shows that spoon worms have secondarily lost their segmentation. So they are a segmented worm that got rid of that along its evolutionary path, but they kept the butt bristles and those bristles might be there to help anchor them in the muck. They're golden. You can see them coming off the tail end there of these spoon worms. If you ever find them washed up on the beach, that is a really great way for you folks to know. Uh, oh, Kelly Avila uh, says we need to go back to jellyfish or maybe even the octopus. You know what? That's a good call. Yeah, we can we can do that again. Uh, we'll head back to some more charismatic animals. But we did want to talk about the the fat innkeeper worm because it had its moment in the news. It was all over the news being retweeted, going viral. And the Monterey Bay Aquarium was uh, in a Twitter moment. And it just so happens that uh, almost a year ago to the day, the 30th of November, uh, I did a live stream here with the Fat Innkeeper Worms because they just don't get enough love. <laughs> now that they're getting their love, we had to come back, revisit them. It took a year for the world to catch up, to want to come and learn a little bit more about the Fat Innkeeper Worm, and we're doing it right now. So uh, we will head back to the more charismatic animals, but just so you know, those otters, those jellies, those they're all connected to the fat innkeeper worm somehow. Yeah. Otters directly because they eat them. Uh, the other animals, we could figure out some way of connecting them within a couple <laughs> of steps. But fat innkeeper worms, 
Uh, it's their time to shine right yeah, now. We're happy to do it. Six degrees of fighting Cooper warm separation <laughs> in the ocean. <laughs> Which I think is mo as that's the fewest number of degrees that I think most people watching want to stay away from fighting <laughs> Cooper worms watching them. At least six <laughs> degrees, you know, to bacon a little bit, you know, one step to bacon. I think most people would be there. But, uh, you know, Kevin Bacon, a separate thing as well. It depends how many uh, degrees you want there. Six degrees of separation fighting worms. I think that's most people's comfort zone there. Yeah. With, with those worms. All right. A couple of questions that just came yes. in. I'm uh, wondering about kind of the front end, back end, if their image is reversed uh, from what you guys are seeing, what you all are seeing online right now. Um, and it's exactly what we are seeing here. So, again, this side of the screen where my finger is right now over towards uh, the, the top left is going to be where the head or the top of this uh, fat innkeeper worm is. And then over here, bottom right, is where its rear end is. Is I apologize yeah. if I got my directions wrong before. I didn't have the little L's up. I was making L's with my fingers. Uh, so I apologize if I no, reversed good. those directions well, and, before. And it, it's easy to tell at this point because bottom right is also the bottom, right? So yeah. there you go. That's oh, how. That's that how was clever. That here. was a good one there. Oh, you're welcome. Um, we also oh, what do they feel like, Emily? <laughs> um, Squishy and firm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it depends on what it depends on what state of fat ink worm you have. Washed up on the beach, tensed up, not a happy fat ink worm. It's gonna be, uh, you know, fairly solid and rubbery and uh, kind of squishy, but you know, it doesn't have tons of give to it. Uh, a more relaxed fat ink worm, as you can see, can be very very long and elongated, um, so they're able to be uh, more or less firm depending on the situation that they happen to be in there. Uh, I saw another question come through. Is this underwater? And yes. yes so this yes, is yeah. not Good um, like an earthworm digging through mud up on land. This is completely submerged in the ocean. So uh, what you don't see when you're looking out over the ocean is this kind of muddy bottom of the seafloor in certain areas. Um, in particular here in uh, Monterey, we have lots of these muddy kind of sandy flats out there where these, uh, where these innkeeper worms are digging their burrows. So these burrows would be filled with water great question yep well folks we are looking at just about five minutes here before the monterey bay aquarium is officially open to all of its visitors for the day uh, we do want to uh, answer any last questions that you may have but we do also just want to say thank you so much for tuning in and watching this fat innkeeper worm broadcast if you folks out there heard about the penis fish stranding in northern california that's this animal the fat innkeeper worm again not a fish a spoon worm an echiurine which is a viper tailed worm because it has the butt bristles it's living in the u-shaped burrow peristalsis is feeding helping bring in the water into that burrow it's grabbing up a mucus net it's doing its own thing providing a habitat for all these other animals from the scale worms and the pea crabs and the gobies that might be living in there with them an incredible animal along our coast that we highlight here at the aquarium and we just just had to get the the stoke levels high for this moment of fat innkeeper worms being on the news emily so yeah. a great job on the camera over there Thank emily you. do you have anything uh to share with the folks here about fat innkeeper worms. Uh, well, you know, I think that you kind of said it all before, Patrick. It's probably not what you all were expecting to watch on your Monday morning, but we're here to bring this uh, delightful invertebrate content to you when you need it. But just like the fat innkeeper worm is doing its own thing and helping other animals and other creatures around it, you keep on doing you just like the fat innkeeper worm absolutely. everyone is benefiting from it absolutely this the fat innkeeper worm is the perfect encapsulation of what it means to live your truth out there in the world <laughs> i'm a worm living in a burrow i'm doing what it is that i'm doing uh if you folks out there can find exactly your niche in the environment and just do you you're gonna be providing so much for your community around you everyone's gonna be able to feed off of that and the fat innkeeper worm is one of those animals there that is uh, truly a delight to share. Very <laughs> odd looking for us landlubbers up here out of the muck, but one of those important animals that we want to share with you here at the Monterey Bay Aquarium that should not be left unseen to the world. So we're so glad you were able to tune in and watch everybody. We are going to sign off here in just a few minutes. But again, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. We'll answer a few last questions here. Uh, 
shots and we post the long shot. So they want wider yeah, shot yeah, of the yeah. display. Let's we can out zoom out quick. as much as we can. All right. That's about as wide as my camera angle is going to go right now. But you can see a network of, of tunnels. We've got some more uh, innkeeper worms. We've got some more little ghost shrimp and some clams hanging out in here. Oh, it looks awesome. Well, folks, uh, yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to the wide shot. We're going to say thank you so much. We're going to sign off right now. Uh, thank you for being a part of the Ocean Minded community. Thank you for appreciating Fat Innkeeper Worms as well as the rest of Ocean Life. Uh, thank you, Emily, for the great job on and the camera. Thank you, Patrick. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. We will see you again soon at the Monterey Bay Aquarium, and we hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day.